In this video, we will be working with slope fields. A slope field is a graphical representation of a differential equation on a finite set of points in a plane. In later videos in Chapter 7, we will be finding particular solutions to differential equations, but in a situation where you cannot find that general antiderivative as an equation, a slope field is useful because it can help you visualize it in the coordinate plane instead. To sketch a slope field, you will simply evaluate dy dx at each given point. Some helpful strategies for making a slope field include making a table and looking for patterns. If dy dx is undefined at a certain point, you will not draw anything at that point. Let's practice sketching a slope field. Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 minus y over x. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the indicated points. The strategy that we are going to use here is making a table. I'm going to make a table for x, y, and dy dx. Now I'm going to fill in my table with the given coordinate points. So one of the points that they give me is negative one, negative one. So X is negative one, Y is negative one. They also give me negative one, zero, negative one, one, negative one, two. They also give me one, negative one, one, zero, one, one, and one, two. Just went through that column. And now two, negative one, two, zero, two, one, and two, two. So now we need to find dy dx at each of these indicated points. At the point negative 1, negative 1, if we were to plug negative 1 for x and negative 1 for y into this equation, we would get 1 minus negative 1, or 2, over negative 1. So that would be negative 2. Therefore, when x is negative 1 and y is negative 1, dy dx is negative 2. So then we can go to the point negative 1, negative 1 on this graph and sketch a slope of approximately negative 2. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be a little bit steeper than if the slope were negative 1, and you just make a tiny little tangent line at that point. Now let's do negative 1, 0. That would be 1 minus 0, or 1, over negative 1, so negative 1. So at that point, our slope is going to be negative 1. Sketch the tiny tangent line there. Now for negative 1, 1, we see 1 minus 1, or 0, over negative 1. So any time that we have a zero in the numerator, that is any time that y is one, dy dx is going to be zero. So this is an example of looking for patterns. Anytime we have y is equal to one, I'm going to set dy dx equal to zero because that means that the numerator of my differential equation will be zero. So at negative one, one, which is this point, I'm doing a slope of zero. At one, one, I'm doing a slope of zero. And at two, one, I'm doing a slope of zero. Now let's go through the rest of these. For negative one, two, that would be one minus two, or negative one over negative one, which is positive one. There's my slope of positive one. For one, negative one, we have one minus negative one, or two over one, which is two. For one, zero, we have one minus zero over one, which is just one. For one, two, we have one minus two over one, so negative one over one, that's negative one. For 2, negative 1, we will have 1 minus negative 1, or 2 over 2, which is just 1. So then at our point 2, negative 1, our slope will be 1. At 2, 0, we will have 1 minus 0 over 2, so 1 half. And at 2, 2, we will have 1 minus 2, so negative 1 over 2, so negative 1 half. And this is our completed slope field. So notice that if dy dx is undefined at a certain point, we would not draw anything at that point. So they didn't actually give us this point, but if, for instance, we had the point 0, 1, and we were trying to plot the derivative at that one, if we were to take dy dx at 0, 1, we would get 1 minus 1 over 0. And you can't divide by 0, so that's undefined. So if dy dx is undefined at a point like that, do not draw anything there. The AP exam will actually not put you in this situation because they will just leave the points where it's undefined blank so that you don't have to draw anything there. As I mentioned before, looking for patterns is really, really helpful in slope fields. For example, when we looked for that pattern to figure out when dy dx was always going to be zero, that saves a lot of time from having to go through and plug it in every single time. Which of the following is a slope field for the differential equation dy dx is equal to y over x plus one? A really helpful strategy for this kind of problem is to identify where do we have vertical lines and where do we have points that are undefined. For instance, if we look at choice A, we have all of these little horizontal lines at y equals 1. So that means when y is equal to 1, dy dx is equal to 0. Let's see if that matches with our equation. If we were to plug in 1 for y up here, we would have 1 over some number. And 1 over some number is not going to produce 0. Therefore, choice A is not the correct answer. 
Let's take a look at choice B. It looks like we have horizontal lines at x equals 1. So anytime x is equal to 1, we are going to have dy dx being equal to 0 because we see those horizontal lines. When x is equal to 1, dy dx is equal to 0. Let's see if that fits with our given differential equation. If we plug in 1 for x, we would have y, which is just something over 1 plus 1, which is 2. And if y is 0, that would work. But if y is some other number, like if y is 3, then dy dx would be 3 halves. And even at the point 1, 3, when x is equal to 1, but y is equal to 3, we see that we have a horizontal line. So dy dx would be equal to 0, not 3 halves. Therefore, we can eliminate answer choice B. Another way that you could have eliminated choice B is you could look along the x-axis and you would say, well, it looks like it's undefined. dy dx is undefined at every point along the x-axis. So when y is equal to zero. So you could write when y is equal to zero, dy dx equals undefined. This means that we would have to be dividing by zero. So our denominator x plus one would have to be equal to zero. This means that x would have to be negative one. So at x equals negative 1, we do see that it's undefined there, but it's also undefined when x is equal to negative 2 and negative 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Therefore, we can eliminate choice B for that reason as well. Let's take a look at choice C. It looks like at x equals 1, dy dx is going to be undefined because we don't have anything there. That's kind of a blank column. So when x is equal to 1, dy dx is undefined. Let's check this out with our differential equation. If we plug in 1 for x, we will get dy dx is equal to 1 plus 1, which would be something over 2. And something over 2 is not going to be undefined. Therefore, choice C is not correct. This leaves choice D. Let's think about why this one is correct. First of all, we see that we have undefined dy dx's all along the line x is equal to negative 1. So we can write when x is equal to negative 1, dy dx equals undefined. This does fit with our differential equation because if we plug in negative 1 for x, we get something, y, over negative 1 plus 1, so something over 0. That would make dy dx undefined. Another way that we can verify that choice D is correct is that it's a little bit hard to see here, but we have a whole bunch of horizontal lines along the line y equals 0. So when y is equal to 0, dy dx is equal to 0, and that fits with our differential equation. If, if y is equal to 0, we would have 0 over something, and 0 over something makes 0, so dy dx is equal to 0. I would highly encourage you to make little notes like this along the bottom of the multiple choice questions, because if you are just trying to remember like 0 versus undefined when x or y is equal to something, that can be challenging. So I would encourage you to write them down and see if they fit with the differential equation. Shown below is a slope field for which of the following differential equations. Then we have these options here of four different differential equations that it could be. Let's use the process of elimination to cross off the ones that it's not going to be. So right off the bat, we are looking for horizontal tangent lines, or we are looking for places where dy dx is undefined. So we can see that at y is equal to 1, so if we have the point 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, when y is equal to 1, dy dx is equal to 0. I'm just going to jot that down. We also see that when y is equal to negative 1, dy dx is equal to 0, because we have that line of horizontal tangent lines. Something else that I'm noticing is that in each row, all of the tangent lines are identical. So in the columns, the tangent lines are different, but in every row, all of these have the same slope, and then all of these have the same slope, and then all of these have the same slope. And if you think about what this means, this means that the x, no matter what the x value is, that is not affecting the slope of the tangent line. That's not affecting dy dx. Therefore, x is not going to be a part of our differential equation. Therefore, we can eliminate answer choices A, B, and C right there. So then let's just make sure that D fits with these criteria. When Y is equal to 1, that would mean we would have 1 squared minus 1, which is equal to 0. DY DX is equal to 0. That fits. And when Y is equal to negative 1, we would have negative 1 squared minus 1, which is also equal to 0. DY DX is equal to 0. Therefore, choice D is the correct answer. To recap, the strategies that you can use are looking for are the rows or the columns the same, and then what does that mean about which variables are in the equation? Is it y or x or both? And looking for where do we have horizontal tangent lines or where do we have undefined dy dx's? Shown below is a slope field for which of the following differential equations. 
This one is a bit more challenging because we don't have any locations where dy dx is undefined. So there's just a blank tangent line and we don't have any locations where dy dx is equal to zero in a column at least. I do see that dy dx is equal to zero. We have a horizontal tangent line at four comma one and negative four negative one. So I'm going to summarize that. I'm going to say at four one dy dx is equal to zero. Now, as we did in the previous example, I'm going to look for patterns in the rows or columns. As we go down each column, the tangent lines are changing. And as we go across the row, for example, as we go across this row, the tangent lines are also changing. This means that y and x are both going to be in our differential equation. The y coordinate and the x coordinate is going to affect dy dx at this point. Unfortunately, this doesn't help us cross off any because all of these have y and x in here. Now we're going to use another strategy. We can see that in quadrant two, all of the slopes are positive. dy dx is always positive in quadrant two. Let's pick a sample point in quadrant two. I'm going to pick the point negative one comma one. This means that dy dx at negative one comma one needs to be positive. Let's go through our differential equations and see if we can eliminate any using this. So dy dx at negative one comma one, that would be one minus four times negative one. So one plus four, that one will be positive. So A is a potential possibility. What about B? If we take dy dx at negative one comma one, we have one minus negative one over four. So one plus one fourth, that one's also positive. Let's take a look at C. We have X, which is negative one minus one fourth. Ooh, see that one's gonna produce a negative dy dx. That one, that one would produce negative slopes. And we have only positive slopes in the second quadrant. So I will cross that one off. In choice D, dy dx is equal to x minus four y. So if we take dy dx at negative one comma one, we get negative one minus four times one. That's also negative. And we can only have positive slopes in that second quadrant. So we've narrowed it down to A and B. Now let's use this information to see if we can get the right answer. So at four comma one, dy dx needs to be equal to zero. If we plug in four comma one into this equation, we will get one minus four times four. That is not zero. So A is not the correct answer. What about with choice B? We have dy dx is equal to y minus x over four. So dy dx at four comma one, that would be one minus four fourths. One minus four fourths is just one minus one, which is equal to zero. So B is the correct answer. Let's make sure that dy dx is also equal to zero at negative four, negative one. This would be negative one minus negative four over four, or negative one plus one, which is equal to zero. Therefore, b is the correct answer. The slope field for a certain differential equation is shown. Which of the following could be a specific solution to that differential equation? This question is slightly easier than a typical AP question, but I included it because this is a really important concept that you need to understand before we get into the harder examples. So this one is a little bit different because in this case, it's asking for which of these is a specific solution to the differential equation. And it has the slope field for the differential equation, but instead of saying dy dx, instead of giving us dy dx, these differential equations as our choices, it's giving us specific solutions to that differential equation. One way that you can approach this is you can take dy dx of each of these to find what's the differential equation. For choice A, if we take dy dx of this equation, first I would rewrite it as y is equal to x to the power of negative one. And then if we take dy dx, that would be negative x to the power of negative two or negative one over x squared. If dy dx was equal to negative one over x squared, when x was equal to zero, we would be seeing undefined slopes because we would be dividing by zero. But when x is equal to zero, we are seeing slopes that are defined on this graph. So choice A is not the correct answer. For choice B, y equals one, this would mean that dy dx would be equal to zero because the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. These slopes are not always zero, so B is not the correct answer. For choice C, y is equal to x squared, dy dx would be equal to two x. And if this was our differential equation, when x was equal to zero, we would see dy dx being equal to zero. But along the line x equals zero, we see slopes that are not zero. We see slopes that are actually a value. So C is also not the correct answer. This means that D is correct, but let's walk through why. If we take dy dx of the equation y equals x, we get that dy dx is equal to one. That makes sense because the slope of the tangent line at every single point here is one. We have a slope of one at every single point. For this specific type of problem, there's also kind of a shortcut that you can use. Instead of going through and finding dy dx for each one of these, you can simply find which of these equations matches the slopes of the tangent line shown on the graph. 
For instance, y equals x, that one, if you, if you graph that one out in the coordinate plane, it just looks like this. And the slopes of the tangent lines are correct at every single point there for this graph. Conversely, if you were to take c, y equals x squared, that does not look like a parabola slope field. And the lines of this slope field do not line up with what a parabola would look like. The slope field for a certain differential equation is shown. Which of the following could be a specific solution to that differential equation? This is very similar to the last one, but instead of going through and finding dy dx, kind of doing the longer method like we did before, let's just do that shortcut method and find which of these, which of these graphs matches this one over here. So if we have the equation y is equal to 1 half x cubed in the coordinate plane, that one would look something like that. If we have the equation y equals 3 halves x squared, that would look like a parabola. If we have the equation y equals negative 2x cubed, that would look something like that. And if we have the equation y equals 3x squared, that would look very similar to the 3 halves x squared one, but it would be a little bit steeper. So now let's just find which of these four equations matches the general shape of this slope field. Well, the general shape of this slope field, it looks like initially the slopes are very steep, and then we go to zero, and then we get steeper again. So it looks pretty much like a cubic. It looks like answer choice A. And that is the only one of our four equations where the shape of that graph matches this, the shape of our slope field. Now we're going to practice sketching solution curves. When you are sketching a solution curve, you're generally just going to go with the flow of the tangent lines. You'll see what that means in just a minute, but don't cross the tangent lines. The solution curve should be a continuous curve on an open interval. So if you reach a point where you know that there's an undefined dy dx, you have to stop and draw an open circle. And your solution curve does not have to be 100% perfect. The slope field for the differential equation dy dx is equal to x minus y over 2 is shown below. Part A says sketch the solution curve through the point negative 2, 2. So I'm going to find that point, negative 2, 2, and it looks like it is right there. And now that I've plotted my point, to sketch the curve, I am just going to go with the flow. I'm going to go with how the tangent lines are going. So it looks like we have kind of a steep slope over here. So I'm just going to go like that. And then I'm going to go with the flow of the tangent lines over here. They're originally going down, but then we are curving up and curving up even more steeply. And it looks something like that. The reason why we don't want to cross tangent lines is if you were trying to sketch the solution curve and you went like this across a tangent line, well, that means that the slope of that curve at that point is obviously not matching up with that tangent line. So you want to either be like touching the tangent lines or going parallel to the tangent lines. And you just go with the flow of how the slope field is going. And then we check that this is a continuous curve on an open interval. That's true. Now for part B, we have to sketch the solution curve through the point four comma zero. So let's find the point four, zero. And then we can go parallel to those tangent lines, go with the flow here. It looks pretty steep. So I'm just going to connect it down like this. And that would be my solution curve. The slope field for the differential equation dy dx is equal to x times y minus two is shown below. Part A says sketch the solution curve through the point three comma two. So here's three and then two. This one is going to be a horizontal line. If we are going with the flow of the slope field, it's just directing us to the next horizontal line over and over again. So that's just going to look like that. Then for part B, sketch the solution curve that goes through the point zero comma zero. There's zero, zero. And originally we're going to have a slope of zero at zero, zero, but then it's going to start curving down. And I'm just going with the flow of the tangent lines, making sure that my lines are parallel to those tangent lines given in the slope field. And there's my solution curve. The slope field for the differential equation dy dx is equal to negative x over y is shown below. Sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0 comma 2. Now we have to be very careful with this one because I'm noticing that we have some undefined tangent lines over here along the x-axis. That makes sense because along the x-axis that's the equation y is equal to 0. And when y is equal to 0 we are dividing by 0 so that gets us undefined. Therefore if we hit that undefined point we have to stop and draw an open circle because the solution curve must be a continuous curve on an open interval. So let's find our point zero comma two. And again, we're just going to go with the flow of the tangent lines. But once we hit this point over here, we are going to have to stop and draw an open circle there. We cannot keep going and we can't pass there because we don't know what the slope is there. It's undefined. And let's do the same thing on the other side. There is our approximate solution curve. And that is a continuous curve on an open interval. Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to 3 minus y times the cosine of x. Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of 0 is equal to negative 1. 
The function f is defined for all real numbers. Part A says a portion of the slope field for the differential equation is given below. Sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. So let's find that point 0, 1, and then we're just going to go with the flow of the tangent lines. So here we have pretty steep positive slopes, but then they are leveling off up here, and then they start to go down again. And then we will do that same thing on the other side, making sure that our slopes are parallel to the slopes of the tangent lines. And there is our solution curve. Part B says write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve in part A at the point 0, 1. Use the equation to approximate f of 0, 0.2. To write an equation, we need two things, a point and a slope. We are given the point, which is 0, 1, and then we just need our slope. What is the m value? To find our slope, we can use that differential equation. So we are looking for dy dx at 0, 1. dy dx is equal to 3 minus y times the cosine of x. So this will be 3 minus y, which is 1, times the cosine of x, which is 0. So dy dx at 0, 1 will be 2 times the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so dy dx will be equal to 2. So now we have the point 0, 1 and the slope m equals 2. Then we can write our equation, which will be y is equal to 2x plus 1. It also asks us to use the equation to approximate f of 0, 0.2. This is actually building off some knowledge from a lesson in chapter four, where we used equations of tangent lines to evaluate actual solutions, or to approximate solutions rather. So if we are trying to find f of 0 0.2, f of 0 0.2 is going to be approximately y of 0 0.2 up here. So this would be two times 0.2 plus one, which would be 0.4 plus one, which is 1.4. f of 0.2 is approximately 1.4. And we can make that approximation because we wrote our tangent line for the point 0, 1, so when x is equal to 0. So at a point that's very, very close to x equals 0, like x equals 0 0.2, we can use the tangent line to approximate the actual value of that function, as we learned in that chapter 4 lesson. Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to x plus 1 over y. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the differential equation at the 12 points indicated. And for negative 1 being less than x being less than 1, sketch the solution curve that passes through the point 0, negative 1. First, I'm going to make a table so that I can set up x, y, and dy dx at each of these points. Then I will go through and list each point. Now I'm going to start filling in this dy dx column, and as I do that, I'm going to be looking for patterns. Okay, so first we have x equaling negative 1, y equaling negative 2. To find dy dx at that point, we have negative 1 plus 1, so 0 in the numerator over negative 2. So since we have a 0 in the numerator, that's going to be the case whenever x is equal to negative 1. So for all of these x being equal to negative 1, I'm going to mark a 0 there, because whenever we have negative 1 for x, we will have negative 1 plus 1 as the numerator of dy dx. Then for 0, negative 2, we will take 0 plus 1 over negative 2, that is negative 1 half. For 0, negative 1, we will take 0 plus 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. For 0, 1, we have 0 plus 1, 1 over 1, that's positive 1. And 0, 2, 0 plus 1 over 2, 1 half. Now for 1, negative 2, 1 plus 1, so 2 over negative 2, that would be negative 1. For the point 1, negative 1, we have 1 plus 1, so 2 over negative 1, so negative 2. For 1, 1, we have 1 plus 1 over 1, that's just 2. And for 1, 2, we have 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 1. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to sketch each of these on my slope field. Everywhere that x is equal to negative 1, dy dx is equal to 0. So I will do a horizontal tangent line at each of those points. Remember, I'm not marking anything here because we don't have points there. This is actually where dy dx would be undefined, but they're not going to make you mark anything there because you really don't mark anything if dy dx is undefined. Okay, so then for 0, negative 2, we have a slope of negative 1 half. For 0, negative 1, we have a slope of negative 1. For 0, 1, we have a slope of 1. And for 0, 2, we have a slope of 1 half. For 1, negative 2, we have a slope of negative 1. For 1, negative 1, we have a slope of negative 2. For 1, 1, we have a slope of 2. And for 1, 2, we have a slope of 1. 
Again, your slopes do not need to be perfect, but they do need to be aligned with one another. For example, if you're drawing a slope of one half, that one should be a little bit less steep than a slope of one, which would be less steep than a slope of two. So now we have sketched our slope field, and it also says to sketch the solution curve that passes through the point zero, negative one. So let's find that point zero, negative one. That's right here, and we need to sketch our solution curve. So we are going to go with the flow here. Now, we know that the slope is going to be negative one because at the point zero, negative one, we have a slope of negative one. So I'm going to sketch that slope of negative one, which would be just going down to the next point. And then I'm just going to go up to negative one like that. Now we need to find what is dy dx at negative one comma zero. That would be negative one plus one over zero. Now this dividing by zero is a big red flag because that means it is undefined. And when we approach that undefined tangent line, we have to stop and draw an open circle because our solution curve must be a continuous curve on an open interval. Part B says, while the slope field in part A is drawn at only 12 points, it is defined at every point in the xy plane for which y is not equal to zero. Describe all points in the xy plane, y not equaling zero, for which dy dx is equal to negative one. Since we know that dy dx is equal to x plus one over y, we're going to say x plus one over y is equal to negative one because we're looking for what are those points where dy dx is equal to negative one. This means that x plus one would be equal to negative y or y would be equal to negative x minus one. This makes a lot of sense once we look at our solution curve because we see that the slope is negative one along this line, y equals negative x minus one. The slope is always going to be negative one along that line. So now we're just going to write up a brief statement saying that dy dx will be equal to negative one for all x, y, where y is equal to negative x minus one and y is not equal to zero. There is our solution.